Interferos by uh, without any uh, more weight. Alhamdulillah, we are so blessed that we have a uh, guest from Salam Center in Orange County. So you just heard Imam Hamza, uh, the beautiful Kira. And now I am honored to invite Brother Ali Rahman, but I would like to give a small introduction about him. So you know that how, how we blessed we are that we have so educated Imam uh, within us. So Brother Ali Rahman, he studied Quran at various madrasas in Turkey. And he is, he is a Hafiz and has attended Hafiz program and memorized the Holy Quran. He is teaching Quran classes at respected uh, graduate school and weekend Islamic school in Orange County. He has a degree in business administration and a master's degree from Golden Gate University. Brother Ali Unhan is currently holding a director of Commerce School at Cargus Corporation. And uh, he dedicates his time and skills at various masjids in Southern California by delivering Friday footballs regularly in five different massages, mashallah. And he is leading various projects at Salam Center and volunteering as a director of community outreach. So I would request uh, Brother Ali Urhan to please come and give us a beautiful lecture and uh, remind us about why we are gathered here. In 
انك انت العزيز الحكيم صدق الله العظيم So the ayah I recited means our Lord send among them a messenger from themselves who will recite to them your book, your verses and teach them Quran and wisdom and purify them. In addition to this, we know from the Quran Jesus Jesus also spoke of Prophet Alayhi coming where he said to Bani Israel, he said, I am giving you glad tidings of a messenger whose name shall be Ahmad. Min ba'dithmuhu Ahmad. So brothers and sisters, his arrival was a turning point in history, bringing people from darkness of Jahiliyyah to the lightness of Tawheed. So, if someone is not happy with the birth of Prophet والسلام, then they are not really a Muslim. Brothers and sisters, I also want to talk to you about Hijrah. The Hijrah is one of the most significant events in the Islamic history, which took place also in the month of Rabi'ul Awwal, marking the establishment of Muslim Ummah in the city of Medina, and the start of the Islamic calendar. It wasn't just a physical journey for the Prophet ﷺ and the companions to travel from one city physically to the another one. Hijrah was a migration from opposition, oppression to justice. It was a migration from division to unity. It was a migration from conflicts and fighting to peace. It was a migration from ignorance to knowledge, and it was a migration from fear to hope. Brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, And the muhajir, the immigrant, is the one who abandons and gives up all what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbids. Brothers and sisters, we know we don't have Prophet ﷺ amongst us, so we are following his sunnah and his seerah. So the, te the hijrah teaches us a profound lesson about unity, about perseverance, and the importance of worship. Prophet ﷺ, after the hijrah, in the city of Kuba, he told the companions, he said four things. Greet each other with peace and smile. And second thing he said, feed the hungry. And the, fourth, the third thing he said, honor your family ties. And the fourth thing he said, pray when people are sleeping and you will enter Jannah in peace, inshallah. These are simple actions which build the foundation of strong communities. Brothers and sisters, there is a, a third and important event which also took place in the month of Rabi'ul Awwal. While Rabi'ul Awwal is a time to celebrate the Prophet's birth, it also marks the sad occasion of Prophet Ali's passing. His death was heartbreaking and it was a devastating moment for his companions and the entire Muslim Ummah. In this time of grief, as we all know, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu reminded everyone. He said, if it was Muhammad whom you worship, know that he passed away. But if it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom you worship, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not die. He is still there. Reminding us the passing of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, and he was a human being like one of us. And he also reminded us the temporary nature of this life and the eternal nature of Akhirah. We are here in this world temporarily. It is a station, not a destination. Our destination is Akhirah and all of us are going to meet our Lord. 
So through his death, it brought sadness, but his legacy lives on. Like I said, we don't have the Prophet ﷺ today living amongst us. We are not one of the lucky ones. However, his legacy lives on through two things, Qur'an and Sunnah. And in a famous hadith, Prophet ﷺ said, I am leaving you, leaving you with two precious things. As long as you adhere to them, you stick to them, you hold on very tightly to them, you will never go astray. And they are the Qur'an and the Sunnah of Rasulullah. Prophet والسلام, brothers and sisters, said something which gives us a lot of hope and it raises our hopes. He said in a very famous hadith, he said, A person is with the one whom he loves. So if you truly love someone, you will want to learn about them. If you truly love someone, you will want to know more about them. So we must get to know the Prophet ﷺ by studying his sunnah and his sirah and complement all of those, of course, with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To indicate this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an a very important ayah. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ O Prophet say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us through the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام O Prophet say, if you sincerely love Allah then follow me, follow the Rasul. Allah will love you and forgive your sins. He is the most merciful and most forgiving. So if you look at this ayah, it shows us the path to success lies in loving and obeying and following the Prophet ﷺ and his sunnah. If you look at this from the opposite side, if you don't follow the example of the Prophet ﷺ, it means you don't really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, loving the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam is necessary. It is an important part of the faith. Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said in a hadith, none of you truly believes until I am more beloved to him than his father, his mother, and all of the mankind. So this shows that love for the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam is key to completing our faith. If we don't really love him, our faith becomes weak. It's not really complete. So he also tells us one of the best ways to love him. Of course, there are three things. Reading and studying the Quran. Reading, studying, understanding and contemplating the Sunnah. Studying and understanding the Seerah. But Prophet ﷺ hands us a key so we can take the key, open the doors one by one and the key will inshallah take us to Jannah. Inshallah. In the hadith, Prophet ﷺ told us, whoever revives my sunnah has loved me and whoever loves me will be with me in paradise. This is the key. Reviving the sunnah of Rasulullah is a direct path to success and to paradise. So let's talk about this a little bit. When asked about the sunnah of Prophet ﷺ, people often mention how he used to sit, how he used to eat, how he used to drink, how he used to dress. These are all great sunnahs. And we would sacrifice anything and everything for one of his sunnahs. However, however, these are all outward practices. They are all important, but sunnah goes far beyond than just these actions. I want to remind you and myself, brotherhood and sisterhood is a sunnah. Selflessness 
generosity. Putting your brother before yourself is a sunnah. Love, forgiveness, and tolerance are sunnah. Expanding your heart to everyone and putting a smile to someone's face is a sunnah. Being humble and easygoing is a sunnah. Maintaining good relationships with your families and your neighbors are sunnah. They enjoin good and they forbid evil. Enjoining good and forbidding evil are very important sunnahs. Even after many years after his passing, Prophet Ali's legacy still continues to spread mercy, compassion, and justice while preventing harm and promoting goodness around the world, brothers and sisters. I want to tell you about a trending topic where some people call our Prophet a war prophet or a warlord and in reaction from the Muslim side our brothers and sisters react and say no, he was a love prophet. Brothers and sisters, these labels miss the balance in his life. Prophet upheld peace and mercy, yet he defended his community and the Muslims with justice whenever it was needed. But he was not offensive. His actions, like the Treaty of Hudaybiyah and the Constitution of Medina shows that he was far from being a warlord or a war prophet. He established one of the earliest systems of justice and equality over, pay attention, over six centuries before Magna Carta. Magna Carta was a system that was established in England in the, in the year of 1215 that it says the kings are equal in front of the law just like anyone else. But Prophet ﷺ did this six centuries earlier. And now the same or the similar people are calling him a warlord. Brothers and sisters, especially after the conquest of Mecca, instead of seeking a revenge, Prophet ﷺ had announced a public pardoning, a general amnesty. He did not seek revenge from his lifelong enemies. His goal was not a revenge. His goal was to establish peace. His message was clear, to establish justice, equality before the law, and peace. So how could someone like him be a warlord or a war prophet? He was much more than that, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described him. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ a mercy to the world. Brothers and sisters, caring for the orphans and the widows and the needy is a significant part of Sunnah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the greatest man who ever walked in this earth to be born as an orphan. Do you think that was a random act? His life teaches us that the importance of caring for the vulnerable, especially the orphans and the widows, are very important. And he says famously, we all know it, the hadith that goes, the one who cares for an orphan and I will be like this in Jannah, holding his two fingers like that. Brothers and sisters, we talked about reviving Sunnah. But reviving Sunnah isn't just about knowing these things. It's much more than that. It's about living them. It's about understanding them. It's about teaching them to our kids and our youth. Again, he said, whoever revives my Sunnah has loved me. Whoever loves me will be with me in the paradise. To truly love him, we must actively live and understand his teachings. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you about something. Please pay attention. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does nothing without a plan. He tells us in the Quran, Wallahu khayrul makirin. Indeed, Allah is the best planner. 
And he has a knowledge of everything. Again, we know it from the Quran. وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ بَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا Not a leaf from a tree falls down without his knowledge. Everything in creation has a purpose. So we must also plan carefully when we are reviving the sunnah of Prophet wasalam. What do I mean? I mean we need to come together like this. We need to come together to brainstorm, come up with projects and plans, and talk about how we can revive the sunnah of Prophet wasalam, study them and understand them. But more importantly, how we can teach them to our kids in a way that we are gamifying and entertaining them, yet we are teaching them about the Prophet wasalam. Brothers and sisters, this reminds us the first commandment, what was the first commandment? Iqra, read. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Iqra, He didn't mean Iqra to the men. Or He didn't say Iqra to the women. He made no gender differences. And He didn't say Iqra to the old, Iqra to the ulama, or Iqra to the kids. He said Iqra to everyone. And Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, in none of his hadith, He makes gender differences. And in the hadith that I'm going to tell you, he makes no gender differences. Seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim. Brothers and sisters, we must inspire and encourage our children and our youth to study their religion deeply. However, we should also encourage them to excel in both religious and secular education. Just as we encourage them to learn and understand the Qur'an and recite the Qur'an, memorize the Qur'an, we should also encourage them to be excellent students in their schools and in their worldly educations. Can you imagine the benefit to the Muslim community if we have Muslim students becoming Hafiz al-Qur'an, yet they are graduating from top class universities like Stanford, Harvard, Berkeley, and so on and so forth. Can you imagine the benefit to the Muslim Ummah today if we had these types of students? Brothers and sisters, Prophet ﷺ tells us something which motivates us so much about this than anything else. He says, no parents, no father can give his children better than good manners and good education. Not money, not wealth, not assets. Nothing better than good manners, good akhlaq, and good education. Brothers and sisters, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions 750 verses related to science and education, and 25 verses condemning jahiliyyah. I want to remind you two things before I wrap up. Muslims today has one enemy, ignorance and jahiliyyah. We don't have any other enemy. We know this from the history of Islamic Golden Age, which ran from 8th century till the 14th century, where Muslim scholars excelled in mathematics, in medicine, in astronomy, theology, philosophy. We did it once. We laid the groundwork for European Renaissance. We can do it again, brothers and sisters. The second thing I want to leave you with, Prophet ﷺ told, I wish I could meet my brothers. We hope that we are those brothers and sisters. He wanted to meet them. To truly honor this, we must follow his teachings and focus on his sunnah and how we can revive his sunnah. We must ask ourselves, how can I change as a person? How can I change my family? For the sake of the man, our prophet, who transformed the world from bad to good, how can I transform myself?
فقال عز وجل من قائل محبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما لبيك all together اللهم صل على